So Google have finally listened to its users and have introduced the new tables feature and I for one am really excited about this. So in this video I'm going to show you the basics of how to use them. We're going to look at creating a table from their pre-made templates and we're also going to look at converting existing data into a table. I've included chapters below so you can skip to the relevant parts. And if you're ready, then let's get started. So first things first, I'm using the free version of Google. So if you've got a free account, then you'll be able to access everything that I show you in this video. If you don't have access, then just be patient because Google are rolling out tables to everybody um, at the time of this recording. Okay, so you can see here, I've got a blank spreadsheet and let's say we're going to set up a simple customer contact sheet. So to insert a table using one of the pre-built templates, click on insert up here on the toolbar and then click on tables here. Another way of doing it is to right click and then scroll down until you get to tables. And either way, it will bring up the tables pane over on the right hand side here. I'm just gonna hide myself so that you can see what I'm seeing. So you can see there are lots of categories over here. If we just minimize this. So yeah, you can see there are different categories of tables listed, which you can expand and collapse on by clicking on the arrow to the left of them and there are lots to choose from. So we've got event planning, customer relations, project management and so on. So click on any of these and as you hover over the different ones that are there, you can see that the preview over on the left hand side changes to whichever one you're looking at. So we want to create a customer contact sheet. So we go into customer relations here and that's given as customer contacts and customer opportunity. And it's just a simple contact sheet that I want to create. So I'm going to click on insert here. And that's it. The table is now inserted onto our sheet. You can close down this tables pane here on the right hand side by clicking on the close, the cross here in the top right corner. And that gets rid of it. And I'm back. <laughs> so that was short and sweet. That is how to insert a pre-built template. And don't worry about everything on here. I'm going to take you through everything, all the options and everything shortly. But first, what happens if you've already got data in an existing sheet that you then want to convert into a table? Well, if I'm just going to go onto this other sheet here, this sales sheet, and you can see there's lots of data here already. And this is what I want to convert into a table. So click on any cell within the data set, then click on format, and you've now got an option to convert to table. Another way of converting the, these data into a table is to select all of the data first. So I'm just gonna do control, shift, end, and down, and shift, end, and right. So all the data is an, um, selected here. Then right click and click on convert to table. And that's it, it's now converted all that data into a table. So let's look at this table. You can see it's automatically frozen the headers. So there's a thick gray line here and between row one and two. Um, and when you scroll down, that header row is frozen at the top. Now you can change this if you want to. You just hover over that thick gray line until you get like the hand icon. And you can click and drag this down to wherever you want the rows to be frozen. Or if you don't want any frozen rows, then you can just quickly click and drag it right back up to the top. And you can see that that is now unfrozen but I'm just gonna put it back down to below the header row. So that's frozen. So let's look at what we can do with the layout of the table. So you can see the table name here, and if you want to rename it, simply double click into it so the text is highlighted, and then you can just rename the table. So I want to change this to sales data. So I'm just gonna do sales data. Now just a heads up that if you want to use separate words in the name, it won't allow you to use a space you have to use something else um, in between the words. So an underscore is ideal. And then press return once you've done. Next, if we click on this little drop down arrow next to the table name, it brings up the table menu. So here is another way that we can rename the table. You just click on there and it's highlighted the text ready to rename it. We can also adjust the table range. So you can see here, this is the range of data for the table. We can turn off alternating colors. So you can see at the moment, the row colors are gray, white, gray, white. You can switch that off here and have it so it's all white. If you want to change the color of the rows, let me just put that back on. So if you want to change the color of the rows, we click anywhere in the table, go to format, then click on alternating colors. So it opens up the alternating colors pane over on the right hand side here. And you just need to change, let me just hide myself again. You just need to change the option for color two here. So here you could click and change to a 
a slightly darker color if you wanted to just to make it stand out a little bit more and then click on done to see that it's ready so that just stands out a little bit more go back into the table menu so we can customize the table colors so we can choose another of the preset colors here if we wanted to or we can click on the plus symbol here to add in our own custom color which is great if we want to use our own branding next we can revert back to unformatted data which basically takes it back to what it was originally we can also delete the table completely so it gets rid of everything and the final option is to send feedback to google so if something's not working or you want to report an issue or have general feedback then you'd click on there and do that so that was the table menu next to the table menu drop down you'll see there is an icon that when you hover over it it says views so if you click on there, you've got the option of creating a group by view or a filter view. So you can actually group the data. For example, if we wanted this table to be grouped by country, then we would click on there and click on country. And it's now grouped the data for us by a country. Now there is an option here at the top now to save that view. This means you can quickly go back to this view whenever you're in the sheet. So to save the view, click on save view, give it a name, make it make sure it's one that's recognizable to you so you know exactly what it's showing and then click save so if i just do another group filter here um, by item type and again this is now grouped it by item type and if you don't want to save the view you click on the cross here next to where it says save view click on the cross to exit and then just click on don't save and the table returns to the normal view so now if we click back on this views icon here you'll see that any saved views are listed at the bottom here, along with any unsaved views as well that you've created during this session. So the group by country is the one that we saved a minute ago, and then the unsaved ones have got the word temporary at the beginning. So you can see here, temporary group by item type. And this, this will actually disappear when you close the sheet, so it's not gonna be there the next time you open it. So let's move on to the details in the table itself. So if we quickly go back to the pre-built one here, you can see that there's text included already in this table, which is in italics, and these are placeholders. So it's showing us the type of data that should be included in these cells. If you don't want the placeholders showing in any of the columns, then we click on the little drop down to the right of the column header, click on edit column type, and then just click on show placeholders to remove the tick. And you can see that that information is now gone. So staying with this pre-built table, we can rename any of the column headers by double clicking into the name that's already there, highlighting it, and then typing whatever you want it to be. So I'm just gonna call this customer name, press return, and it's now changed. You'll also see that each column header has a little icon to the left of the actual column name. The icon represents the column type so that you can see at a glance the type of formatting that's applied to that column. So for example, in column A, there's a little head and shoulders here. That's because it's formatted as a people chip. Columns B, D, F, and G have all got the letter T, the large T and the small T, which means the column type is text. And columns C and E have a little drop down icon next to it because those columns are drop downs. So we can easily change the column types by clicking on the arrow to the right of the column name of the column that we want to change and then click on edit column type and it will list all the different column types that you can apply. Now, if we go back to the data that we converted to a table, you'll see that none of these columns have icons next to them. And that's because we've not applied a type to the columns yet. So let's do that now. Column A is the region, and this would be better formatted as a drop down because it's using a list of set regions. So whoever adds to the data should really choose one of the regions that we've given. So we click on this drop down arrow to the right, we go to edit column type, and we click on drop down. Now this opens up the data validation rules for the drop downs over on the right hand side. I'm just going to hide myself again. So it's automatically included all the regions in the table as an option, which is good. We can then edit these if we want to by going in and just typing out whatever we want. We can also change the color of each one as well by choosing a different color here. Or we can click on reset, which takes it back to the default light gray color. If we want to add more options, for example, another region, then we click on add another item and fill in the details. And then to remove any, we simply click on the bin or the trash can here over on the right hand side to remove that particular value. If you want to reorder them, for example, put them into alphabetical order, then we click on the six grid icon here and just click and drag them to where we want them to be. So I'm just going to quickly do that while I'm here. 
So we can also change the style of the drop down by clicking on advanced options. And we've got the options of a chip, which is what it is at the moment. We've got arrow and we've got plain text. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to change this one to arrow. And then once you're happy with everything, click on done and the changes will be applied as you can see in column A here. So I'm also going to set columns C, D and E as drop downs as well. So I'll just quickly go and do that now. Okay, so that's done. So going back to column B for the country, I'm going to change the type to text. So again, we click on the drop down arrow here, we go to edit column type, and we click on text. You can see that the icons have now appeared next to the columns that we've changed so far. And the next column to be formatted is the order date. So if we just scroll across a little bit here. So the order date, we want, ideally we want to format that as an actual date. So again, click on the drop down, go to edit column type, and click on date. And we've got the option of date, date and time, or just time. We don't really need the time, so we just want the dates to be put there. And we've also got the shipping date column as well, so we'll do the same format. Um, so date and date, and that's done. So once the columns, once these columns are in date format, you can double click into the cell and it opens up the little calendar if you want to change the date at all. The next column to be formatted is the order ID column, and I'm going to change that to a number format. So I'm just going to click on edit column type and go to number. Under the number format, we've got the option of number, percent or currency. So I'm just going to change that to number. And let's just. So, and the unit sold column is, all, is also a number. So I'm just going to change this to number format. That's fine. And then these final five columns here are all monetary values. So I'm just going to go in and change these to currency. So we go to number and then currency. So I'm just going to scroll across some more and we'll do the same for the unit cost. Go to number and currency, total revenue and currency, total cost, currency and profit and currency. So you can see now that every column has got a little icon next to the column header. So they've all been formatted. So to quickly insert or delete a row, we right click on the row number here over on the left hand side, and we can insert one row above and one row below the row that we're currently in. We can also delete the row, you can clear the row of any data that's in there, you can hide the row and you can resize it if you want to. If you want to add a row to the bottom of the table, simply go to the bottom of the table, start typing in at the very bottom of the table, and it will automatically expand the table to include it. So to insert or delete a column, then click on the drop down arrow next to the column header. And we've got insert one table column to the left or one table column to the right. And you can also delete the table column if you wanted to. Now, once you insert any columns, remember to give the columns a heading, otherwise they're just gonna be down as column one, column two, etc. And if you want to add a column onto the end of the table, if you scroll over, as soon as we start typing in any data here, it automatically expands the table to include that column. And again, we can just resize the column and make sure you rename the column here. So going back to our pre-built table, just click on here. If you scroll down, you can see that it's only given us 15 rows of data and that's it. We can't scroll down any further, but we can add more rows if needed. We just need to type a number in here in this box. So if we put in another 20, then press return. It will add that many rows into the table, keeping the same format as the rest of the table. So now let's quickly go through what other options you have available in the column menu. So let's go back to our converted table here. If we click on the drop down arrow to the right of the column header, and you'll be able to sort the column A to Z or Z to A, or by the fill color or text color if applicable. You've also got the option of applying a filter to the column. This works the same way as when you apply a filter by clicking on the icon up here on the toolbar. So you can choose which details you want to see. So if we just filter this um, and we're just going to choose a couple of countries here, click OK. And you can see it's now filtered it by the region that I've just chosen. So when you apply a filter, you'll notice that the column type drop down here has been replaced by the filter. To get to the column type options again, we click on the filter icon here 
Then click on column menu and you can see the original column options here. I'm just going to remove the filter by clicking on the filter icon in the top bar and we'll go back to the column options. So the final option is group by column, which is how you group the data, which we went through earlier on in the video. So that was just showing you the basics of tables in Google Sheets. Now, as much as I love that Google Sheets have finally brought tables into it, there are still still tweaks and improvements that are needed. For example, there's no option to include a totals column like there is in Excel. So you would have to insert a column at the end and put in a formula to total everything. Also, when you group data, there's no option to subtotal any of the columns, which I find a bit disappointing. I also don't like that the drop down column type allows you to still enter any type of data. So even with the drop down options being in that cell, you can still type in something else and all you would get is a red mark telling you that that's, that's now in, invalid. So there's no option in the setup to reject input like you can in the normal drop down data validation rules. Now, hopefully that is something that Google is going to bring in at some point because it is quite frustrating really. However, if you do need a quick and easy way to set out data in a table, then I love the pre-made templates that are there. They save you so much time and they are really easy to just customize and make your own. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you've used tables yet. What do you think of them? I would love to know what your thoughts are. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.